I had brought the Montauk book with me for some reason, even though I thought it was all just a bunch of crap. And this dude walks by in, like, biker gear and a big burly beard. Big, big guy. So you like that stuff, huh? You like that Montauk. I said, oh, my gosh, this is all a bunch of crap. He says, you know, I used to work for Preston Nichols. What? Preston Nichols is one of the authors of the book. And I, I just started laughing. I said, I said, look, there's no way that, there's no way that you worked at Montauk, because Montauk is a joke. It's, it's fake. Well, he kept on talking, and the next thing you know, he sat down, and we stayed up all night, and I had, like, scribbles all over the placemats, and, I mean, this guy, and it's a shame that he doesn't want to go public, because I'll tell you, he's got an amazing amount of information. And I didn't go into it very much yesterday. Some people asked me to go into it a little bit more, so I will do that. You have to understand that there is a basic, there is a basic New World Order, an Illuminati, if you will, which is primarily run by the Rothschild family. The Rothschild means red shield, which is uh, all kinds of esoteric symbolism we could go into, which I don't have the time for. The Rothschilds financed Stalin and the takeover of Russia, the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. They have financed the French Revolution. They financed World War II. They financed Hitler, and they were financing the U.S., so they, they believe in order out of chaos. You fund both sides of a war, and whichever side wins, you got their vote because you're their paymaster. You've given them their money. You control their financial supply, which means you can control the government, okay? And you profit no matter what. Right. And also what happens is that the war stimulates the economy, so you get much more infrastructure and much more buildings coming out of it. That's why, for example, Ford Motor Company was building tank plants in Germany, which is why Hitler's Wehrmacht had the tanks, it was from Ford, when American bombers bombed Ford's tank plants in Germany, Ford personally repaid Hitler so he could rebuild the tank plants faster. Boeing actually was shipping, this has been documented, has, was shipping passenger airliners to South America which were then sent to Africa, where they ripped the seats out and turned them into Hitler's bomber fleet. That was Boeing. These are American corporations. The whole idea of these big wars is a joke. It's a setup. It's a game that's played to play off the opposites against each other in the hopes of synthesizing a new world order where we all kind of synthesize. That's why Democrat and Republican is a joke. Okay? They want certain aspects of the conservative Republican Party they want, for example, the, the uh, cultish religious aspect, but it's not Christianity. That's why the liberal side is all about being open and being free and, and not having any of these traditional shackles on you. Because what they ultimately want is a racist society. They're very racist, and they're interested in a new world order which is run by a Luciferian philosophy. Now, this is very disturbing-sounding stuff, but... They actually believe that since they have the secret tradition that goes back to Atlantis and that they've been persecuted for thousands and thousands of years by various people, nobody persecuted them as badly as the Roman government through the Catholic Christian Church. They were tortured, they were killed, so they came to the natural conclusion, you can understand anybody would have done this under the circumstances. What do you think they would choose? They would say, okay... Whatever God these guys think is God, that's not the right one because he's, he's stringing us out on the rack, he's torturing us, he's killing us. Therefore, whoever the Christian church says is the bad guy is the good guy. Okay, wait a minute. Lucifer is the brightest light, the brightest angel in heaven, right? And he's the one that got tossed out of heaven. Well, maybe he got tossed out of heaven because he was too cool, right? Because... Because everybody else in there was a bunch of corrupt shysters. Well, this is actually what the most powerful people in the world think. And they are a fundamentalist religion just like any of the others. They still believe this weird stuff. They follow these teachings. They actually buy into this. Okay, So that's why it's weird because you see these political parties that are siding with religious fundamentalist Christianity. And they actually do have a fundamentalist religion, but it's the mirror opposite. So their energy vibrates with each other, and that's why they work together so well. Don't forget, of course, that Hitler was also running on a Christian platform. 
And who was Hitler's main ally in World War II in Europe? Italy. Italy is the Vatican. The Pope and all that stuff was supporting Nazi Germany, okay? Because it was in the Vatican, which was in Italy, which was Mussolini. So, the reason why I'm telling you all this is not for you to have a fatalistic sense of doom. It's to also enlighten you to the fact that this is going on, that it's real, and that the Nazis were very, very proactive in rebuilding all of the ancient secret that had been lost because for the first time they had a world power government that could go out and militarily by force invade places that were being kept under lock and key with heavy guard and go in and steal the artifacts and the technologies that would allow them to rebuild their so-called master race and all this stuff that they're so into. Okay? What's that? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark, exactly. So, what do you think happens when a UFO crashes in, in World War II and the people who financed Nazi Germany, once it collapsed, they're looking for as much technology, as much goodies as they can get their hands on. So what do you think they're going to do when these UFOs crash? They're going to want to rip out everything from those UFOs imaginable and reverse engineer it and make it into something they can use. So what's the first thing that they go for? They take out the chair. Because these UFOs, you're sitting there in the chair and you say you want to go somewhere, you meditate on it, and a vortex opens up in front of the ship and you fly through it and you pop through a wormhole and you end up somewhere else. Okay? So that's what the chair does. The chair is the interface with your consciousness. So when you understand that your consciousness is interfacing through the chair, that helps you get to a point in yourself where you can see that the chair is a psychic amplifier. That's what it does. The chair's function is that it takes your natural, innate psychic function and makes it vastly more powerful. Oh, the Philadelphia experiment uh, was uh, the result of the testing of high-energy arc welding on the creation of very large battleships by the U.S. Navy in World War II uh, surrounding Norfolk Naval Air Force Base, which I used to be right near in Virginia Beach. What they found was that when you got this, uh, this high energy, th this was the highest arc welding ever done, like a big bolt of lightning. And it pinched time space into space time. So you get this black hole in the room. And then actually they were having tools disappear. So the tools never came back and they realized there's something here we can use and they actually designed it into something that they put on the ship in the hopes that the ship would be able to be invisible like the tools became invisible. What they didn't realize is that they were going to jump from one place to another and it had a devastating effect on the crew. Anyway, uh, I don't want to spend all of our time just going through this old material, so we're going to get back to the chair, we're going to get back to the point that they could actually create a wormhole with the chair, with the psychics exercising their consciousness in the chair. They had help from, apparently, ETs from Sirius in designing the chair. And the chair allowed them to send people through time. There were multiple wavelengths that the chair cranked out on graph paper. Okay, Some of those wavelengths were corresponding to a natural 20-year harmonic in the Earth's vibration. And that 20-year harmonic, as it turns out, if people were moving through time, which is one of the things they found they could do, is send people through time, this wave would tell you exactly where you were in time, depending on where up and down it was. So what they found that was so bizarre was that at December 21st, 2012, they could calculate it down to the day, that's how precise this was, that for some reason all the graphs, all the waves would go into a complete flat line. They no longer moved up and down like before. They went flat for like seven or eight seconds. So then they're asking the guys that went through these stargates and were traveling into the future, what happened to you? Every single time that somebody tried to hit 2012, they said the same thing. There was this thing they called the bump. It actually hits you like a bump. You actually feel like you've slammed into something. And as soon as it slams into you, you have the most incredible religious experience you can imagine. Cosmic consciousness. Your consciousness just blasts into this wonderful place where you have awareness of no space, no time. All knowledge is available to you. Ecstatic God consciousness. 
You could be the galaxy, you could be a subatomic particle, you can go everywhere, do everything, and there's no sense of